Well, how about you? Well, I'm first nervous. of all, I that you could uh, put some up at this time of the year in December. Usually, you probably wouldn't be able to, but it's been nice enough to do that, so that's nice. Um, don't tell my wife that, though, because she's been wanting me to put Christmas lights up, and I haven't. But other hey, than I that, I I didn't do too much. I, I got the evil eye. I got the evil evil eye one too many times, so I, uh, I I relented. Sure. Um. Let's see. As far as I know, we're still looking for. Uh, I believe we're still looking for Chad. Um. As far as board members, I think Commissioner Breitling is here, was going to join me in my office. Um, let's see. Mike will be jumping on in a moment, I uh, assume. He's been down here. Maybe give it just a couple of more minutes. I think really what, what we've got here is, uh, is basically a status report of projects and then um, uh, Commissioner Peterson, there you go. My apologies, I was just jumped off a call and I am here now, so I am here. Okay. Um, I know I think we're uh, we're still waiting for Mike, uh, and uh, I think Commissioner Breitling was going to be uh, headed down to my office. I know he's in the building. Um, otherwise, I think that might be everybody. Yeah, we should wait wait a minute or two, and then let's just go. Okay. Do you want to run this, Robert? Because I can't see my attendance. Yeah, that's fine. That's okay, thank you. Hey, Robert. Yes. Yeah, um, I'm in Jim's office. We, we're trying to get him connected to his iPad here, so he's going to be on my computer. Okay. Um, I might run down the... Commissioner Breitling, come on in. As we've done a couple of times before, uh, Commissioner Breitling is in my office, so he might be just slightly off camera, but he will hear all of you, and uh, I trust that you'll be able to hear him as he has has input. So I, I think we are uh, we are now. I thought I saw Mike jump on. Yep. Okay. I think we're ready to go. Mr. Peterson, did you want to call it to order or do you want me to? Yep. Yeah, and call me to order. And what I will do uh, is officially defer to you because, again, you can see everybody. You have a big monitor and I don't. But soon I will have my own little mini and I'll be able to do these things. So, Mr. Wilson, please uh, proceed. Very good. And uh, thank you, Chair Peterson. Thank you, uh, members of the building committee. Really, the point uh, today is we want to give you a rundown of the current status of a number of projects. And then also um, there is a proposal that's been brought forward by the courts to submit uh, an application for a court facilities improvement grant. And uh, so Megan Huffman uh, with the, uh, the courts is with us and uh, is gonna walk us through that. A number of us have uh, um, had the opportunity to go through with uh, with a number of court staff uh, and see the proposal. We've got some uh, um, uh, basic uh, outlines of what the uh, what the project would be um, to uh, to just open the discussion and uh, and basically get a, a, a authorization to bring from the building committee to bring that forward to the commission for consideration at the next meeting on the 21st and then submit by the end of the year. So with that, uh, I'm going to jump into um, a number of current project updates and please feel I'm free to... Sorry, Robert, do you want to take the roll? Yes, thank you, uh, uh, Brielle. Thank you very much. I apologize. If you would take the roll, please. Okay, Mr. Peterson? I'm here. Mr. Breitling? I'm here. Mr. Montplaisir? 
Here. Mr. Wilson? Here. Mr. Johnner? Here. Ms. Huffman? Here. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Didn't mean to skip over that part. Um, project updates. Uh, for those of you that have your agenda in, in front of you, I'm just going to run down the list. Please interrupt me with uh, with questions at any time. Uh, 2A jail Robert, camera. Is I'm sorry. Do you want to approve the minutes also? We just jumped over that one too. Thank you very much. I, uh, I, I'm uh, just a little, uh, just jumping the gun here. Um, trust everybody has had a chance to review the minutes of the last meeting from June 26th. Um, I didn't see any uh, uh, cause for question or concern. Uh, if, unless there are any questions, I would entertain a motion. My pleasure, move to approve. Is there a second? Jesse, second. Reitling, second. We have two seconds, essentially. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion, uh, motion passes. Minutes are approved. OK, um, now moving into project updates. 2A. Uh, jail camera installation. Uh, you'll recall this is a continuation of a project that began last year in 2019. That was uh, essentially an upgrade to from analog cameras to uh, digital cameras. Last year's portion was really the the HD uh, hardware and replacing uh, current. Uh, camera locations and the 2020 project was to uh, expand that out to a number of additional locations that were identified and needed. Uh, so that, uh, that project is uh, ongoing. Um, we've got uh, Building and Ground Supervisor Gene Gartner on the line as well for the meeting. Current status is the equipment has been delivered and uh, the, uh, the installation is going to be happening in the next couple of year, a uh, couple of weeks, expend, expected to be completed before the end of the year. Installation is going to be somewhat simplified because when we did the backbone of the system last year, they also ran the um, uh, ran the power and ran the video cables to where they need to be connected. So the, the final portion of that is a, essentially um, mounting and connecting the cameras. So that is uh, uh, coming soon. And um, obviously, a little bit of coordination uh, with uh, COVID protocols, but we do expect that to uh, be completed by the end of the year. Are there any questions? Okay, moving on to 2B uh, courtroom remodel and combination. This is, uh, I believe, the numbers 302 and 303, uh, the two small. Uh, civil courtrooms. Um, is that correct? Also, I'll, 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 thank you. 303 and 304. Yeah. Um, the, the two currently smaller um, courtrooms that are used for civil proceedings um, and the uh, uh, it was uh, commission direction to utilize a portion of the, the COVID uh, grant dollars to combine that into one larger civil uh, courtroom so that the courts could um, uh, entertain uh, civil trials and and be able to socially distance and, and space and and I think the the overall discussion is that it will be um, just aside from COVID needs it will be more more useful for the courts as well because it will accommodate some larger civil trials that uh, that they haven't been able to uh, accommodate in the past. Um, that is um, uh, the the bids have been uh, the RFP has been out for a couple of weeks. Uh, there was a, a pre bid walkthrough last week. I think bids are due Wednesday or Thursday, and so this is a project that will be uh, moving along uh, fairly quickly. 
Uh, I know we, we haven't don't have an exact schedule um, firmed up until the uh, the general contractor is identified, but uh, certainly uh, uh, trying to create some efficiencies here. Uh, Gene and the building and ground staff are doing some portions of this internally to uh, uh, to minimize cost, but uh, we also have uh, um, reviewed renderings and, and worked through the process and worked, uh, I think, uh, quite well with the courts to uh, to review the layout. And, and I uh, understand we have a, a layout that, uh, that the courts are happy with uh, and is, is going to look like a pretty nice courtroom. So uh, that, that would be um, most likely um, hitting stride um, shortly after the first of the year. Any questions? Mr. Wilson, have we figured out the aesthetics of the space and they meet the needs of our, our courts? We have. We we had a meeting a couple of weeks ago where we we had a number of judges uh, and and court uh, court personnel that really reviewed a a full swath of, of color palettes um, that were that were laid out and and we gave uh, our architect um, direction and and so I I think we have. Uh, have broad buy-in uh, on what that uh, what that uh, color scheme and, and design uh, is going to look like, uh, Ms. Huffman. If you wanted to add anything to that, I, I thought I thought we had a good discussion of, of getting uh, uh, getting that that nailed down. Yeah, they looked really good. They brought three groupings of different samples for um, like the countertops, the carpet, what's going to be on the walls, etc. So. We they did a great job of showing us all the different choices and we were able to go through and a vote, um, have a majority vote on what we thought would look best. So we're pleased with how it's going to turn out. We think it's going to look good. Hey, as long as your team is happy, because I've been sharing with them that you don't get a do over on this one for about 40 years. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, Robert, I think it's nice. Sheriff, go ahead. Um, I was wondering if uh, if we were able to have any input on this, if any of our guys were involved with it, um, just for security purposes. Do you know if there was anything that we need we looked at or we needed to look at? You know, I I don't know if we had to, if if we had you on on this. I think it was the the understanding was that this was. Uh, because it was not within the secure wing of the of the courthouse, that there was never an intent uh, that that was gonna that there was gonna be any kind of a, a, a criminal uh, hearing going on there. I know there's been a number of conversations um, with uh, uh, with Gene and the architect and the courts uh, to to provide security on the uh, on for the the judges that would use uh, in court staff that would use the the courtroom, but we will. Um, that I, I will take that as an oversight, and we will uh, we will get you up to speed and, and uh, um, have you have you take a look at that if you if there's anything that that you need to uh, uh, need to weigh in on. Sounds good. I I saw that Gene had his hand up maybe, but I it's not. I don't want to throw a wrench in the whole project. That's not it by any means. I just wanted to make sure that you know if there was any sort of. Uh, um, an issue where we would need to have more staffing or something like that to assist with it, then of course that would be one of my concerns, but I'm assuming that that probably wouldn't be the case. Just wanted to see if we uh, had had looked at it at all. Uh, so Jesse, uh, Gene here. So, um, so, so what we've done with this is uh, two things is most of the security items that you see in the brand new courtrooms and the new new additions, are, are going to be incorporated into this courtroom. So it'll actually be the same benefit to, to you and your staff uh, that we've thought through on this part of this uh, remodel. And then um, the other portion of it would be is that as far as uh, bringing contractors and stuff in, uh, we're going to try to keep it minimal for your guys to have to worry about. Uh, myself and my people will probably uh, coordinate with the uh, construction crews, bring them in much like we did before. Uh, you know, when we did the finance office and stuff and um, and then look to uh, if, if we need any assistance 
uh, just look to involve your guys where we need them. Okay, yeah, and that sounds good. I mean, our biggest concerns, of course, would be uh, without seeing it or anything would just be the fact that we could um, have some some video security um, footage that way and then also more than one entrance and exit in case we need to um, evacuate people safely or in the case of an active threat type situation, we'd have a couple different options as far as moving people throughout the area and the protection of judges if we needed to get them out of a room quickly. I can I can actually, um, if you want to, want to I can drop you off a set of prints too. Um, one of the things um, to know is that we are going to have access uh, obviously for ADA purposes and, and fire codes. There'll be uh, uh, plenty of accesses but um, also you'll be able to access out the back uh, through the judges areas if you need to just like you do now and um, and or out the front and, and stuff like that. But I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll bring you up a set of prints so you can review them. Okay, yeah, no problem. I, I'm sure based on what you're telling me, it sounds like it's probably pretty good, so. And Lad, last point on that. Uh, Jesse, I, I think we I think we've met all of the needs you identified, but I am I'm going to make a point of, of making sure that the the architect touch ba touches base with you and, and you have a chance to hear directly from him all of the uh, um, elements that that have gone into that courtroom and if you have any uh, any uh, concerns or, or issues be able to to share that directly. Sounds good. Thank you. OK. Um, moving on to 2C, uh, negative airflow cells uh, out at the jail. Um, that is a um, project that has been completed. Uh, to my understanding, those uh, those cells are already being being utilized and, and I I have not heard this specifically, but I, I, I certainly trust that they are um, already providing value to the to the sheriff's office and, uh, and jail staff. Sheriff, have you had yeah, any feed just, feedback just, on the use of those? It, it, not a lot of feedback on them, but I just wanted to simply just add in there that um, that I appreciate uh, Gene working on uh, us with a number of things out there since we've had the COVID stuff and he's uh, gone out there and opened up the uh, the outside air exchange and different things for us to get fresh air in there and so um, definitely appreciate that and then working on getting us some extra sanitizers at different times. Mr. Wilson, how were bids compared to estimates or Gene to someone? Kevin, I can't recall how that all worked out. I remember where we were at, but how they, how in the end, how did the pricing work to the estimates? Bids, uh, bids will bids are due either Wednesday or Thursday of this week, so we will uh, uh, we will see shortly. Okay, thank you. I think uh, uh, Gene, Gene, feel free to chime in. I think there were maybe seven or eight different general contractors that pulled plans from the from the bid exchange. Yes, yes, yep, and uh, we had a, we had the uh, electrical contractors there. And also uh, some uh, mechanical contractors there. So we had a good. Oh, sorry, I was talking. I was talking HVAC at the jail. Oh yeah, so so out at the jail, yeah. You mean as far as the uh, the cells that were completed? Correct. Yeah, I know we haven't done the courtroom stuff yet. I'm wondering how the cells turned out. I'm trying to get a baseline. I'm, I'm trying to anticipate what what things are going to happen next for us. Okay. Um, did your dog bark? I have to ask. <laughs> yeah, she's heard. right now it might be in this life at home, Gene. No, let's just move on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyhow, um, <laughs> uh, yes, yes, we we did, like I say, uh, like Robert was mentioning, we did complete. Now, we're not 100% complete because uh, um, due to the COVID and stuff, We what, the only thing that we really need to do, when I say that, it, it's substantially complete. We just got to get the air balancing in there to to finish it 100%. But with the COVID and stuff, we just haven't been able to utilize that or you know to mobilize. So, yeah, so I'm that's sure. what our costs. How were costs, cost, Gene? Oh yeah, they were perfect. As a matter of fact, I think we came in a little under. Okay, uh, that's what I was hoping for. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Moving on, da Davenport Highway Shop. Um, obviously, on a commission level, you had uh, conversations about this project uh, a couple of times. Uh, I think with this may be a project that uh, benefits from a, um, uh, a late winter uh, or unseasonably warm uh, fall at, at this point. The last information I had from, from Gene was that it's still uh, a toss up, but potentially could get a, a foundation poured uh, before before freeze up. And, and then if you if we get that, then they can work through the winter. Uh, and again, that was uh, was last week and, and Gene, you didn't correct me this morning on that. So I'm I'm understanding that is still the uh, the plan that uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's that's either that's either a no or a no go uh, very shortly here. Yeah, that's correct. Um, a matter of fact, we just got the uh, uh, cement contractor um, to lower his bid a little bit more yet to sharpen his pencil. I sent him back to the drawing board, but um, I think um, I, I kind of am at a point where I left it to uh, Jason Benson and also Blaine Lavog out there to uh, hash out if they felt that it, how important it was to try to do this fall or or if we wait till spring at this point. OK, so that is. Um, I don't know if anybody can hear me. I, I just had a message flash up bad, bad network quality, uh, but if, if you're hearing me. Um, that is uh, uh, obviously a project that we're um, moving forward on and, and we're down to kind of a game time decision uh, in the next couple of days if that's going to be poured now or if we're going to if we're going to um, punt to the to the spring and you'll recall from the uh, share or from the, the highway department they were um, indicated they very easily could accommodate either time frame but that is, that is moving moving forward on the uh, moving forward to the jail tuck pointing and grouting. This was um, admit, admittedly, this was a project that uh, Gene and I sat down uh, probably a month ago and we were just reviewing our building and grounds um, uh, budget and plan for 2020 and uh, realized that that we had uh, failed to connect on this this particular point that we had it budgeted and uh, and, and he hadn't uh, uh, didn't hadn't received that message. So he, uh, uh, to Gene's credit, he did some quick uh, quick reach outs to uh, uh, to vendors to see if they were uh, still had uh, capacity to work before the end of the the season and uh, got uh, Gene, as I understand, really the the one contractor here in uh, here locally that does a lot of this work and does does it at the uh, at the scale that that we require when we jump into these projects. And so that was uh, you were able to get that uh, in the pipeline and I, I believe was committed or was completed um, in the last week or so. Uh, correct. It, it, matter of fact, um, well, partially correct. Um, they they completed the exterior and, and we're doing that. Um, one thing uh, that uh, both the contractor and myself missed is we forgot about those inside courtyards. So uh, commissioners, uh, I apologize for the oversight, um, but there's probably going to be a little bit of a variance um, as far as the actual billing uh, because we did miss the inside courtyard. So um, what I asked the contractor to do, and I trust that uh, trust him good enough that he's I think he'll be very fair to us is just to continue forward without, uh, you know, not not worrying about a bid on that particular item because there's only like three of those little inside courtrooms or courtyards at the jail there and they're they're very small and so I don't feel that there's going to be a big increase so I just uh, asked for him to do it on time and materials. Yeah Gene that's a good idea I mean the reality is there's only a couple people that do this anyway so it's not like you're going to have 1500 people show up you have what two. Right so, yeah. It is what it is, and it's uh, how many linear feet? I mean, can you give me a guess how many linear feet you're talking about? Uh, not off the top of my head, no. But um, inside those, is it pretty, inside those courtyards, I, I 
Well, you know, you go up the walls and stuff. I suppose you'd do, uh, I suppose those walls are what, 30 feet high? And then, uh, yeah. so it'd probably be, they're 30 by 20s maybe in there. They're not that big. Yeah. Uh, you know. You're talking that re the recessed area where you store the dumpster, right? No, actually, uh, these are within the within the jail. Uh, so, like, if if there was a fire and they but you had a small fire and they had to clear a pod, they can move them move the inmates out into these little areas within the within the jail itself, but they're outside, and uh, they're just oh, outside. I know where. Yep, yeah, I know where we're at. They're an exterior courtyard, they call it, but yet it's not really outside. It's contained within the perimeters, but yet outside. So then that's where, and, and so when I say that, so you're only going to have like, I think there was the one I actually to look, so I had to, you know, had a good idea of what I was looking at when I did ask to do time materials was um, the one only had like three joints to caulk, you know, so it, it won't be much. Yep, and that's what I was getting at. How many linear feet of that? It's got to be pretty minimal. I'm pulling it up on on yeah. GIS here, but I boy, I would have to guess. Uh, let's see, 10, 20, 30, 30, 60, 90. Um, boy, you know, maybe maybe up to 500. Feet? Yeah, it might be a little more than that, I think. But yeah, not much more. I would agree. Yeah. Okay. That's just off the top of my head. I mean, I could I could go measure up for you if you if you'd like. Nope. I think you're good. Okay. Thanks. That's just, again, that's just my opinion. Now, ask everybody else, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. That's a point that I'm going to chalk up to. Uh, I learned something today. I didn't realize we had uh, enclosed courtyard areas within the uh, within the jail facility. I, I had not seen those before. So good catch, uh, Gene and uh, contractor, on on getting that one completed. Um, all right, moving on to uh, uh, jail intake expansion project. Obviously, this is by far the. Uh, uh, the biggest single project that we have on tap um, have had a, a, a number of conversations with our uh, architect that um, uh, initially put together a space needs study and then we contracted to uh, uh, develop plans in 2020. Um, those plans are going to be done uh, about early in, uh, in 20 uh, after the first of the year look to be able to have those out for bid um, by uh, I think we had set a target date of January 14th uh, turnaround time about a month uh, to have bids due uh, on that so uh, get a get a general contractor uh, contract finalized in in March and uh, anticipated that we would be into actually Moving, uh, uh, moving dirt and uh, and uh, working uh, on that uh, with the uh, thaw in the spring. Uh, again, with a, a call last week with the uh, with the architect, it still appears that the um, existing cost estimate that we um, have is is still good. That's roughly 6.3 million dollars, uh, and so this is a this is a project that that uh, will move. Quickly uh, on that call last week, it, there was some discussion of the actual time frame of the build will be somewhat dependent on whether or not they need to phase. We need to phase the project versus being able to just um, evacuate that area and let the contractor go to it. Um, the feedback from the sheriff and the jail administrator was that there's a good chance that with uh, with uh, jail population as it is that that would like likely need to be a phased approach and so it probably will take just a little bit longer because of that but but everything does look um uh look, look promising to uh to move forward expeditiously
All right. Well, we will uh, certainly keep you up, uh, keep you updated on that. But that's a, a, a review of, of projects in process. Uh, moving forward to uh, court facilities improvement grant proposal. Um, this is obviously, uh, I think, commissioners, you're uh, familiar with this program, and uh, we have an opportunity uh, before the end of the year each year to sit, uh, submit applications for um, state um, uh, assistance grants to uh, improve courthouse facilities. And, and I was approached by um, presiding Judge Rasick uh, about an opportunity to create a jury assembly room uh, on the third floor that really currently does not exist. And uh, I've included some some sketches that were uh, provided by by FOSS architect. Um, Judge Rasick actually um, uh, described this as we were going as, as we had FOSS in and we were going through some of the particulars on the courtroom remodel. And so we we did a walk through the the the, the crux of this issue being that there's a court that there's a jury assembly room on uh, on second floor, but not third floor, and and that this would uh, create a space for some of the the trials that uh, uh, that take place uh, up there when there are uh, juries that need to deliberate. Uh, this would be a, a much more conducive way to do that than we have right now, and be able to make better utilization of space uh, that's available. And uh, you know, I've got some sketches that we can refer to, but um, Megan, as, as you uh, kind of live and work in this space all the time, I would uh, look for you to kind of uh, walk through both the, uh, any additional rationale uh, of, the, uh, of why this is needed, as well as some of the options that we considered and, uh, and what's represented with the, uh, the sketches. And I can share my screen uh, if you want to refer to those or if you want to just uh, uh, just talk. Feel free to do that too. OK, thank you. I will. Um, I would love to share my screen if I can. I don't usually use this platform though, but let's see. Um. OK, I started to share, but I will if, if you can if you can throw an image up, go for it. I'll try. I don't usually use this. Uh, let me see. Okay. Can you guys see that right now? Yes. Okay. Okay. So this is going to be, so just taking a step back, this is going to be the new courtroom model of 303 and 304, the combination. So if you look towards the top, that circle there um, is the rotunda. So right across from that, And A is kind of the one we're looking at. So currently, uh, this square here is courtroom 306. Um, this is the door that you would walk into from the hallway from the open area there. And then uh, towards the top here is the judge's bench. So that is still all going to stay there. Um, and then this leads to the secure hallway. So basically, uh, what we're looking at is to remove all the benches that are usually here. This courtroom is very small, so it's usually only used for mental health hearings, which we have about twice a week. So this would really um, complement the new courtroom, the combination of 303 and 304. It would really complement that project um, and also make this room a dual purpose room. Right now, it's only a big enough for really just the small mental health hearings. So this way, we could have um, our civil jurors for the trials, um, deliberate and meet here. Uh, and right now with COVID, they would be able to fit um, six feet apart. So we can use it during COVID time and non-COVID time. Um, so we'll be able to use it as the jury room for the new courtroom and also dual purpose, still keeping it as courtroom 306 because we don't want to lose any more courtrooms. Um, and then currently to the side of that is where there is a really small uh, room there with a long table not conducive um, to social distance at all. 
Um, so in that area, we would have two um, bathrooms there, which would be just used for uh, the jurors because they're not supposed to be amongst the public and other people. Um, they're supposed to be kept separately. So therefore, it'd be dual purpose. We'll have the courtroom 306 for really, really small hearings, mostly mental health. And then also have a nice new complimentary jury room um, with attached new bathrooms for the jurors for civil trials. So that would be our request. Any questions from anybody? I have a question for Jean. I know we're on a wet wall, but mechanically speaking, is this going to be an issue? Have you looked at it into that detail yet? So when you say the wall, you mean like well, we're on a, we're on a, yeah are we going to be able to plumb the thing because i know we're on a wet wall right so yeah flat is yeah. a wet wall but just because we draw something doesn't mean it works so in an old courthouse there's right. a lot more intricacies than in other places so have you have you gone to that level of detail on this i want to make sure if we apply for a grant we can actually build it right i uh I believe it's I think it's doable because of the fact if we do uh, you know if they do the uh, men's and women's restrooms back to back like they're showing here uh, they can connect up into the one main sewer line probably off of the old existing women's uh, restroom and we should be okay. Will that lead to any issues downstream meaning other bad plumbing that we may encounter. Are you aware of anything bad in that area that may need to be no. remediated? No, actually, those those particular bathrooms have been pretty good to us. Um, and and the, even though they're in the old part of that, and, and when I say that, um, the piping there, I, it almost seems like to me it got replaced maybe uh, a little bit before I came on board, uh, you know, 18, 19 years ago. But um, it seems to be in decent shape. Yeah. I've never had any. Yeah. yeah I, do we have a cost yeah. estimate? I looked through the packet. I couldn't find it. Doesn't mean it's not there. I just couldn't find it. No, we don't. We we don't have that at uh, uh, at this point. This was uh, uh, certainly something we have to develop uh, as as part of uh, getting that up and running for the. Um, the application and we have two weeks to go uh, on that. I, I know we again we've had uh, cost looking at this uh, to more or less look at the layout. I, I would anticipate we would uh, lean on them for uh, for some of the estimates there, but we would we would certainly have that by the time we present it to the uh, uh, the commission for to consider the grant application in two weeks. I say a flag for the grant. Very good. I'm just one person again, though. Lots of people on this call. And and I certainly can uh, bring forward. I I can bring the this proposal forward for for consideration by the board in two weeks uh, without a motion. But if the uh, uh, if the board were so, uh, uh, the committee were so inclined to make a motion of support, uh, certainly would would note that as we would bring it forward to the commission. Right, like I would move we we have a motion of support for the application to present this to the full commission. I'll second it, Peterson. OK, so we have a motion and a second to uh, forward a, a motion of support uh, for this grant application to the full board when that uh, matter is considered on the 21st. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, that is all the uh, uh, concludes the agenda that I had. If uh, if there are any other questions or comments, I would uh, stand by for those uh, those comments. Otherwise, would look for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Second.
So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> All opposed? Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate the uh, uh, the meeting and the opportunity to uh, uh, to update everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.